Dunkley, um, let's not get into predictions of who and what and how much because no one actually knows, but let's see. What are you thinking? Well, there are eight candidates in that field and my bet is it'll go down to where the preferences flow from the um, independents, the green, the, the uh, Victorian socialists. Um, Pretty sure they're not uh, going to the libs. <laughs> <laughs> well, even the Australian Democrats are back in there. The Australian, yeah, well, they were on the show on Monday night yes, and also indeed. the Libertarian. Yeah, uh, it's amazing. Candidate. The Victorian yeah. Socialists yeah. almost won an upper house seat at the last state election. Imagine That's thinking the Greens cool. are too far to the right. That, I know, the, the, <laughs> Victoria is cooked. It's honestly, it is like I was when I was a student socialist, but just never got a job, but never, as never changed, never as charming, never got my <laughs> self-effacing sense of humour and boyish good looks. So, Bronwyn, Dunkley. You, you did change a bit, I take it, <laughs> Dunkley, are, are, are people getting their expectations too high that the swing is, uh, is going to be substantial? No, Therefore, I... if we're all sitting here and... It's basically a return to normal. Then the no, PM's going to I, march I, out of it pretty I think, clean. I think the bottom line is that the swing is probably somewhere between three and five percent, um, which would be good for the opposition yeah. uh, and bad for the for the government. And if it goes further, as I said, I think it'll come down to what happens to those preferences. Um, I think the candidate that the Liberals have got in the field is good, and I think the Labor Party candidate is totally lacking in ability. Otherwise, you would have turned up to your pub. Uh, God love you. Event. Even if you think it's a hostile environment, you still mm. turn up because there's but, a chance but, to turn one person. if you're person, really good in politics, one you love a hostile environment mm. because Correct. it gives you the opportunity to bounce Sharpen your language. Yeah, right. Don't worry. We'll get you and Stephen <laughs> so, Connery in front of the live <laughs> audience as well. Um, all right. Uh, just uh, I want to quickly also talk here about uh, the climate predictions that were put out by the, uh, <laughs> the Climate Authority today. Um, Misinformation. Yeah, you want to talk about misinformation. They claimed they could go down to the very postcode and tell you in your suburb what was going to be happening in 2050. Joe, as a bloke who has advocated for change um, yep, and understanding, to suggest that you can model climate down to the suburb or that there would be such huge variations between suburbs in 30-something years, good luck. I do not understand why these guys just keep falling into this same bait-and-switch trap it is just so 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 because, stupid it is such dumb it politics their religion. because I, I, I know and this is what i'm saying i do of course i believe in climate change they i believe Gaia. i believe we do need to um to manage our economy i might need we have to make sure that working people are not left worse off as a result of that that is my one so just let them buy whatever car they want to buy but um but again the, the old the old saying you know one should never make predictions in politics especially about the future mm. um one would say the same thing about climate change because the minute you make a wrong prediction everyone's going to say see look at this you said it no, would never no, rain again no i know and the whole and so the but whole thing he thing's honestly believes in gaia he has a belief it's a religion for him now, the bottom line is... Tim, that, and Tim Flannery, of course, Tim should, Flannery, know that, yeah, should, should of course know that... Um, and he's the one who actually... Well, remember, it'll never rain again. The dams went through. Right. And Warwick Amber's currently 98%. And, 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 and he's the, the, the head of, of, the, of the council that comes out and makes predictions. They have no standing whatsoever. Mm. And yet they get reported as if they're a legitimate outfit. They're not. Yeah. And at, at the end of the day, whenever you get collectivism, the individuals are sacrificed to that collective. And that's exactly what's happening there. They, the zealots in the, um, in the way the whole argument goes is the little man doesn't matter. They can just all drop but off. But also what, what always irritates me about it, right, is whatever predictions they end up making, Australia in and of itself does not control the damn weather. Like what's happening in China or the third world Nobody is going to weather. matter. But also what is the point of putting out even more alarmist data or, or putting out more, so many sets of data that surely at least some of them are going to be wildly wrong and then people will point yeah. to that and say, this just shows the whole thing but it's all, is horse it's crap. it's all part of the thing and of so, making people believe they're going to bore know, so, death, but, uh, unless they can stop but what I'm putting saying a new tax on it. Is on if, I could, if I could create a human being, a synthetic human being, who would do the most damage to actually getting to net zero and transitioning the economy and getting... Mo more and more people on board, they will look exactly like Tim Flannery. Correct. All right, guys, we're out of time.